Welcome to the sine and cosine ratios. Uh, requirement first is you have to look at the tangent ratios. Uh, so watch that video first, and this one will make a lot more sense if you do. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, sine and cosine uh, deals with the right triangle. So we're going to talk about the acute angles of the right triangle, A and B. And so the sine of angle A, here's angle A, is the opposite leg. So it goes straight across the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So I said in tangent, you're going to get the hypotenuse in here. And then the cosine, the cosine is uh, the adjacent leg. So if I said it was talking about angle A again, the adjacent leg would be this leg right here over, over the hypotenuse. Okay, and of course the tangent is opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So let's go ahead and find the sine of A and the cosine of A and the tangent of A. Okay, we already talked about this. The sine of A is opposite, so this leg over the hypotenuse. And then the cosine would be adjacent, which is AB, over the hypotenuse AC. And the tangent would be opposite leg, BC, adjacent leg, AB. Okay? And then same goes for the sine of C. You just go opposite uh, over hypotenuse. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, tangent does not include the hypotenuse, only the sine and cosines do. Okay, and then notice uh, I put those in red, uh, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -A, because it spells out um, uh, Sakatoa. If you can spell Sakatoa, then you know that it's sine, cosine, or tangent. Uh, and I, it's just an old uh, uh, little rhythm here that uh, kind of helps you remember. Some old hippie caught another hippie taking old apples. I know there's another version of it. I don't think it's appropriate for videos. So anyway, uh, so find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the acute angles. Okay, so here's number one. Uh, so we're going to find the sine of z and the sine of x and the cosine and tangent of z and x. Okay. Uh, so here we go, the sine of x, cosine of x, the tangent of x, the sine of x is over here, so I would go opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent would be opposite leg over adjacent leg. And the same goes for z, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite leg over adjacent leg. Okay, same thing for number, number two, we're going to find it for r and for p. Okay, first you got to figure out using Pythagorean theorem, you guys, which is in another video. 10 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. Uh, or you can realize this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle because that's 10 and this is double. It's twice the shorter leg, so uh, it makes a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so it's 10 root 3. Okay, and then uh, just, just check. Go ahead and practice first. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and then uh, opposite over over adjacent and we should get those uh, ratios right there okay uh, okay so we're gonna find uh, this is where uh, it gets fun you guys well not yet uh, we're gonna find some it actually everything's fun in geometry uh, I think anyways okay we're gonna uh, round uh, lengths to the nearest tenth and angles to the nearest degree okay so here's number one you got this right triangle you need to recognize is it sine cosine or tangent and I have uh, the adjacent leg with respect to that 66 this is the adjacent leg and we have the hypotenuse that would be a cosine ratio so we're going to do the cosine of 66 equals x over 15 find the cosine of 66 is 0 0.4067 and then when you cross multiply, you get x equals 6.1. Okay, number two, again, you need to find out sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay, this one, the hypotenuse is not being used. The hypotenuse is down here, so that's a tangent ratio. So the tangent of x equals opposite over hypo over adjacent. And and what you got to do on this, you guys, is you got to figure out what is 16 divided by 10. It's 1.6, and we got to work backwards. So if you have a chart, you guys. Um, a piece of paper where you got the, the tangent ratio, uh, the trigonomic ratios on there. You got to go down your tangent column and find the one that gets you closest to 1.6. If you're using a calculator, then you got to hit shift tangent 1.6 or something to that effect. So it's a shift tangent or second function tangent. Okay, so just play around with your calculator. Make sure you can get about 58 degrees. All right, let's try another one of these. Okay. Got this right triangle. Um, you need to recognize this is a, let's see, here's the angle. This is opposite leg. This is hypotenuse. That means it's a sine ratio. So the sine of 13 equals that. And then when you cross multiply, you should get about 40. Okay. 
All right, so here's a couple definitions here, so we can do uh, some applications here. Okay, so this is called the angle of depression. So here's happy me up here, and I'm looking down. This would be what's called my angle of depression right here. And if I'm down here, then that would be called the angle of elevation. All right, so let's try one of these. So pilot is looking uh, at an airport from her plane. Uh, the angle of depression is 29 degrees. If the plane is at an altitude of 10,000 feet, find approximately how far uh, it is from the airport to the plane. Okay, so here's a picture that kind of describes all of that. Here she is, uh, 29 degrees angle of, uh, angle of depression, and it says that the plane is 10,000 feet elevation, and so they want to know what's this length right here, okay? So you remember from one of our earlier sections that if that angle is 29, then this alternate interior angle down here is also 29. Okay, and then right there I got a right triangle over here. I got that 29, I got opposite leg, I got adjacent leg, so the hypotenuse is not being used, tangent ratio. Okay, so you're going to go tangent 29 and then find the tangent 29, cross multiply, and you get about, uh, she's about 18,050 feet or so. Okay, and that's it.